day she plays different things that you say. What comes into your mind that makes you say she plays? How does it come about? It needs some background. It is a fact that we have the most evolved neurological system compared to a worm, insect, bird, animal, anybody, anybody. But we also have a psychological process. Whatever your psychological process, your thought and emotion, is only happening because of a certain amount of information that you gathered, isn't it? Oh, you think she is a wonderful person, so certain kind of thought. Oh, you think she is not nice, another kind of thought. Oh, he would think this is somebody else. With all this information, whatever you have gathered, whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. The type of information you gathered determines the type of thought and type of emotion that you have, isn't it? This is one thing, if you teach human beings, to understand your psychological process is entirely your drama. It's got nothing to do with reality, is it so? Your psychological drama has nothing to do with the reality here. Hundred people can be sitting here and everybody in their own psychological space and they're in hundred different worlds, they're not in this world. So, I have <laughs> an empty head, nothing. <laughs> So I'm in this world. <laughs> so because I'm only in this world, I'm paying attention to everything. I have nothing going in my head. If I sit in one place, you know, once in a way, when I take a break, for five days if I close myself up, I don't have a single thought in my mind. I don't read, I don't watch television, I don't write, I don't do anything, I don't even look out of the window. Not a single thought in my mind because Psychological process is just a small drama which has gotten magnified simply because you've gotten so identified with it. It's like this. People always come up to me and say, Sadhguru, I want to meditate but the thoughts are coming. I ask them, see I will teach you another kind of meditation where your kidney function will stop, your liver function will stop, your heart function will stop. Are you interested? No, no, no. Then what, you only you want your brain function to stop, why? <laughs> See, when you sit and meditate, your kidney is functioning, liver is functioning, heart is functioning, you have no issue. Only if your brain functions, you have a problem. Yes? <laughs> why is that? Because you are not so identified with your kidney function, but you are super identified with your thought process and emotion. Because you're so identified with it, you think it's you, because of that, now it has obliterated your experience of life. Tell me in twenty-four hours' time, how many moments are there beyond thought you looked at something? For most people there isn't a single moment, or some people have few moments. I have just a few moments of thought, <laughs> rest of the time I'm just like the sky <laughs> Simply that, just life. If you are just… are you life? Mm -hmm. Tell me properly, are you really life? Yes, your life, isn't it? Because I am life, I have a body, I have a thought, I have an emotion, I have a home, I have this, this, this and so many things all accessories, but you're experiencing the accessories. But is there experience of life on a daily basis? You're misunderstanding your psychological drama as life, isn't it? Your psychological drama is your drama, maybe badly directed, but <laughs> see, when it's badly directed, people suffer it, when it's well directed, they enjoy it, isn't it? Hello? So your psychological drama is yours, you can play it, nothing wrong with it. It's like we start playing a game, we are on a tennis court. But somewhere, you hit the ball, you enjoy it, you hit the ball, you enjoy it. After some time, you keep the racket down and go, isn't it? Right now with this game, you're not able to stop. 
Just imagine, suppose you pl started playing tennis and you can't stop, twenty-four hours. How you would suffer tennis? That's all that's happening right now. Your psychological process has become unstoppable. It's simply on and on and on. So the simplest solution for this is, don't try to stop it because you're not trying to stop kidneys and livers and heart and whatever else that's happening, you're all fine with that. Only with brain function you have a problem because of the identification you have. You have misunderstood your thought to be you, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Whatever your thought is, you think it's you. But your thought is coming from a certain information that you gathered from outside, isn't it? If I wipe out all the memory in you, will you have a thought? No. It is only coming from the type of information you gathered. What type of information you gathered is not all by choice. If you walk in the street, everything that you see, hear, smell, taste and touch gets recorded in your mind, you can't help it. What goes into you as information is not all in your hands, isn't it so? Ninety percent is not in your hands. Simply it's happening all the time because everything that you sense through five sense organs is just getting into you and recorded. There is no good, bad, ugly in this, it's just information. Now by your recognition, you say, oh, this is nice and it becomes good. You say, this is nasty and it becomes bad. You say, this is horrible and then it becomes ugly. This is your doing, but information is simply pouring in and record it. What you gather, whatever you gather, it can be yours, it cannot be you, isn't it? Hello? Yeah. I can say, this is my chair, but if I say, this is me, you will think I've gone crazy, isn't it? Right now, that's all that's happened. What you gather, you start thinking it is you. Let me go a little more basic. The body, this body, were you born like this? No. You came like this and now you became this much. How did this happen? Just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? Or it's just the earth that we're walking upon which became food and now it's like this. Countless number of people like you and me have walked on this planet. They were also smart people. Where are they now? They're all topsoil. <coughs> so will this become? Yes or no? Unless your friends bury you real deep fearing that you may raise from the dead. <laughs> Otherwise, this will also become topsoil. Well, we don't want to go today, but inevitably we go, isn't it? So this is just the soil which turned into food, we consumed this food and made it into this body. Or is it true that this body is an accumulation over a period of time? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. It is. What you accumulate can be yours. Can it ever be you? No. Hmm? No. Whatever you accumulate, at the most you can claim it is mine. I will not dispute that right now, a day will come. But you cannot say it's me, isn't it? Whatever you accumulate can never ever be you. If this becomes a living experience for you, that what you have accumulated in the form of food and in the form of information, you clearly know this is not me, then you will become like me. Simply looking at life as it is, without in being influenced by anything, without being identified with anything. Simply, life. Is that true? Fundamentally, you're just a life. Then you gathered a certain body, so we called you a man. Then you gathered some kind of stuff in you, so we called you this, that and everything. But essentially, are you just life? And is that the most important thing right now, that you're alive right now is the most important thing in your life? Is that so? Yes. Hello? Yes. But unfortunately, that's not in focus. Today what I'm thinking has become more important than me being alive, isn't it? Hello? Yes. My little emotion has become more important than that I am alive, ri alive right now. See, today morning sun came up on time. Hello? Yes? yes? Now you're thinking it's a some… okay, what about it? You know, 
<coughs> some time ago, we were flying a helicopter in Tennessee. It was a nice warm day. So we pulled off the doors and we were flying an open helicopter because weather is good. We went up there and suddenly hit a cold front. All that happened is sun got really blocked out by cloud, so it became extremely cold. So cold, we had no control, you know, our hands are not steady on the control, so we decided to come down. As we coming down, we just debating, suppose sun doesn't come up tomorrow, what will happen? Maybe in three months this will happen, six months that will happen, we just guessing. Then I just came and did a little bit of research. If sun does not come up tomorrow, in eighteen hours, everything that you know as life on this planet will be gone. Except a few microbial life deep down in the earth, everything else will be gone in eighteen hours' time. Just now I gave you a fantastic information. Sun came up on time today morning. I want to hear appropriate noises at least. <laughs> it's fantastic, it came up on time. And planet is spinning on time. Yes. You don't think it's good? Yes. No accidents in the solar system, one planet did not clash into another, all are sticking to their lanes. <laughs> in the entire universe, not a single accident, everything is going fantastic in the universe and in the larger cosmos. But one nasty little thought is crawling in your head and it's a bad day. Everything in the cosmos is going great. One nasty little thought, ah, it's a bad day, isn't it? <laughs> the problem is we have lost perspective as to who we are. In this cosmos, this solar system is a speck, hmm? Yes or no? Yeah. It's like a speck. Tomorrow morning if the entire solar system evaporates, nobody will notice it. In that speck, planet Earth is a micro speck. In that micro spec, Los Angeles is a super micro spec. In that, you are a big man. <laughs> That's a serious problem. <laughs> this is your psychological drama. Exaggerating things to a point where you think if you have one bad thought, the whole world is ruined. <laughs> because we have gotten identified with the thoughts that we generate, with the emotions that we create not understanding, it's our prerogative to create the kind of thought we want, the kind of emotion we want. If you created the kind of thought you want and the kind of emotion you want, would you not do the best sort of thoughts and the best kind of emotion that a human being is capable of? Yes or no? Yes. Then you would function at the peak of humanity. Right now, our own intelligence has turned against us. We don't need any external help, we're just doing fine by ourselves, <laughs> yes or no? Yes. Simply sitting, standing, rich, poor, every kind is suffering. You ask them, childhood, big problem, diaper problem, toddler, big problem, lot of mischief. Adolescence, oh my god, too many problems, middle age crisis, old age terrible. Tell me which time of your life is fantastic <laughs> The problem is not anywhere else. The problem is just that we have lost control over our psychological drama. Because the existential drama of life is not in our experience. Our psychological drama is like a cloud blo blocking up the sun. We don't experience life, we only experience thoughts, emotions, ideas, prejudices and all the rubbish that we can generate. Instead of living in the creator's creation, we are living in our own petty creation, that's the big thing. I didn't create anything, so I am here in this world <laughs>